Well, hello everyone, Texy88 here, and welcome to another retro gaming review. And this time I bring you the first Double Dragon for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Now, when Double Dragon came out in arcades in, I believe, 1987, it, it was massively successful and it, and it uh, remains a, a classic uh, scrolling beat em up. And In it, in it, you're in it. You're trying to rescue a girl that's been kidnapped by uh, um, by the the boss uh, the boss uh, a boss named Big Willy. Yes, that really is his name, and his gang. So, so of course you fight your way through five levels to tr and and try and rescue her. However, one tr twist is that if Two, if you're doing a two-player game and you defeat the final boss, you then have to beat each other up, and whoever wins that fight gets the girl. So enough of that. Let's get on with this. Uh, no, we get actual gameplay so we can get this review underway. So controls are currently M fire Q M. Oh, that that'll do. So as you, as we can see, the backgrounds are quite colourful. There's no music whatsoever, and um, seen um, the two moves which are familiar from the arcade version. The sound effects uh, probably weren't going to get much better than that, to be perfectly honest. Um, we're talk we are talking. Uh, Uh, you even get the shoulder throw as well, although it doesn't look it, it doesn't it doesn't really look like a shoulder throw. But at least there's a throw of some kind there, and and uh, you can still chuck people off cliffs later. So one, so you might be wondering how does the control works when everything from the arcade's been constrained to um. Uh, one button, um, one fire button joystick, which is well, which is the best that the spec, which is the best but that pretty much all all the eight bit computers could cope with. I'm not counting consoles. Like, that's why I specifically said computers. So it's got elbows, so that's in there as well. Headbutts there. And um, everyone seems to have the same low, low, low half of the body. That's probably saved a truckload of memory. Here's, here's Linda, the token female enemy in the game. And she, of course, being female, she makes a different sound when uh, when she's knocked down. And can you pick up weapons? Yes, you can. Can you go up ladders? Yes, you can. Animation's pretty good, I suppose. Nice, some nice detail on the backgrounds there. That, that scoop moto was in the original. Unlike in the arcade where you had to press a, a button for each strike you did, here you can just hold down. Oh, and here's a bobo. And he, he even in this spectrum version, which we had to fit into 48k somehow, he, he still manages to burst through the wall just like he did in the original arcade. Right, but that's a baby dealt with now. We're going to pick up the baseball bat. A little bit of color clash at times, but oh, there's, uh, well, there's an enemy with a knife there. So the knives are in there as well. Oh, a bobo is a pain in the ass in this because even if he's slightly above you and above you then he can still get you oh bugger it that guy got me with his knife these sound effects aren't that great but um, they're, I, it couldn't really have been much better than this so the, the 
I mean, it's a shame there isn't a separate 128K version, which might have been able to to have in-game music or or even be, and or even better sound effect and not and and possibly even not have so much or even any multi-load. But sadly, that's not the case. So that's that level out of the way. Completed mission one. Uh, on to level two. Oh, he's got a knife. So can, well, at least he didn't get me. Oh. So if you press up right and uh, up right and far, he jumps to the right without kicking. Where's a? Oh damn it. Considering the spectrum's color, um, color limitations, it's, in some ways it's pretty good they managed to get this much color into the backgrounds. Admittedly, there there had to be some compromise. That's why the uh, that's why the uh, the sprites all all take on the background color as they walk past it, which is why my character's head's green when when they is put against it. Oh, it's even got the barrels from the original as well. Can I get that? No, I can't. It's too far off the screen. Scrolling is about as smooth as it was going to be, and it, it plays at a, a decent enough rate. Wouldn't say oh, it was the most exciting game in the world. It certainly doesn't have the excitement and drive of the original arcade machine. But um, but again, for for an eight bit spectrum conversion, it had to fit into forty eight k. This was probably about as good as you were going to get. Although, oh my god. Up the bat! Oh God! Come on, come down here, you bastard! Controls are responsive, and it, and it works surprisingly well, even though it's been confined to the to one buttons uh, to the one button uh, joy um, no control method. I mean, even though you're pressing, um, pre even though you're you're pressing. Um, I don't quite know why he dropped his bat just then. I'm it's not. A... Oh, what the hell happened there? It looks like a guy just fell off the ends of the earth. The sound effects are pretty sparse in this, as I said. So, but when it comes to the the sixteen k and four and forty eight k spectrum, not this is on. Uh, use a continue. I'll probably limit this review to just uh, just discontinue. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll see how I go. I've been playing for um, uh, and just uh, about eight and a half minutes now. So, and yes, that uh, conveyor belt on the right there does actually work because I'm uh, because I tried it in a previous run through and test before. Now, M mission three A because two of the levels were so com uh, so com so involved and long they got split into two multi-load sections so that's why it's got 3a rather than just three as i said it it's not a, it's not a particularly fun game to play. Uh, there's n not really much in the way of a feeling of pain, and the and the and obviously the the sound effects are pretty disappointing. So if you want anything resembling de decent sound effects, I think you probably just have to provide them yourself. <laughs> Uh, 
it really is a shame that there wasn't a separate version for 128k Spectra, uh, but... Mind you, this one, this one, this one was um, published by US Gold, so I don't expect miracles when it comes to that kind of thing, unfortunately. Oh, that's annoying. Why does he throw? Why do characters throw these barrels in an arc? It means you have to be a blooming miles away for them to actually hit anyone. See, look how far away it had to be to hit her with that barrel. That's ridiculous. Oh, you can punch too, by just pressing by just pressing fire by itself. You can even punch as well. So it seems like all the moves are there. So, all, so it seems like all the combat moves are present and correct. God. Uh, I, I really wish it could have had a, a sound effect for each time you hit a character, not just the first blow. It does. You get that tch every time you play land the first hit, but the second and subsequent hits, there's absolutely no sound whatsoever. What the hell happened there? Oh. You bastard. Oh, you... You git. No, I've not managed to pick up a knife and use it for my own enjoyment. Even though I know you can do that for... Oh, God. What they managed to fit into this, uh, this version, into 48K, is actually quite remarkable. As I said, all the combat moves from the original ver arcade version seem to be there. And and they managed to get it all work, all working on on a on one button controls. Oh crikey, that was close. It would be. Oh, you git! One more credit. Oh no. I know what's coming. This horrendous bridge jump. What? How did that? But how did that bat not connect with a bobo? One move I've, of a bobo that I've noticed does not appear to be in this game. In the original arcade, there was a move in which he could actually pick you up and throw you. He can't seem to do that in this. So some moves of, of the enemies have been been casualties of trying to cram all of that into 48k. So it's mission 3B. Oh, so... Oh, God! I don't like the way that a Bobo can hit you even when he's slightly above or below you. Ah, <laughs> you dickhead! <laughs> Damn it, you bobo! Stop being a cheap ass bastard! Oh God! Right. Eat elbow, you scummer! quite handy that you don't have to do that jump in this version because of the way the multi-load for this level is split. Another problem with this game is not exactly the most challenging game in the world either. Well, this version isn't. 
but still, I've actually I actually watched Zeus Stadley's review of the Commodore 64 version and put it this way: if I had a choice between this version and that, this version would win every time. At least, at least a lot of the things from the arcade are in it, which is more than can be said for that version. And another problem with the Commodore 64 version is that is something that's actually outlined even in the um, even in the instruction manual of the um, of the non Commodore 64 8 bit releases. You see. There was a problem with uh, trying to fit the whole game into memory and keep the, the simultaneous two-player mode. And there's actually an apology so, saying that to get around that problem, they use a sprite stacking technique that caused uh, caused almost every single character in the game to have this noticeable gap in their in their waist levels. And they said slight gap, but unfortunately, even though it is only a pixel's worth, it is very noticeable. Oh, God. Uh, that, that, that kick there as well. It's not, it's not quite the same as the regular flying kick. Oh, you can sod off. Right. Uh, I'm trying to get them both in line with each other. Dash. It's annoying that the connection of the kick only works on the up upswing. Yeah. Get in line with each other, thank you. Oh no, no. Nah. Although it does have the jumping kick in this, as you've seen, it's very weak. I mean, each one of these abobos takes 17 flying kicks to kill them if you use that. Or so it's all depending on how much time you've got left. Completed mission 3B. Now for mission four. Right, as in the arcade, one th another thing I've kept in this version, if you just walk off the edge, you'll splat all over the pavement or whatever it is down there. So make sure you always jump, just like you would have had to do in the, that way you'll land on your feet. <coughs> That's not just for that cliff, although it's just that that's, that's one, one of the most prominent cases in which you could, a person could figuratively, and also be very careful not to fall, go too far off the bottom of the screen because there is actually a gap where you can fall, just like in the original arcade version. This is my last life I'm doing now. Although it says I've got three credits left, I'm definitely not having another credit once this life's gone. See, it's it's a shame that you, you don't you don't actually press for each time you yeah you you do a strike because it just made made that made those two really easy to defeat. All I had to go is where they landed and keep keep spamming a move and oh no. Oh God, don't be. See what I've got to do. You all got to do is stand where they were, and every time they get up, get up, the luck it is they're going to be going straight into my strikes, and they're powerless to do anything. That does take some of the challenge away, unfortunately. Yeah, got him with my knife. I know in the original arcade version that a bobo was green, but obviously with the spectrum's colour limitations, that was never going to happen. Damn it, ducked it. Oh, 
That kid can get more than one as long as you get them on the upswing. Oh, I thought I was going to just miss me. So yeah, that's what happens if you just walk off an edge, you just splat all over the um, all over the ground like that. Taking advantage of some slight glitches in the AI to help. Come on, a Bobo, get your ass down here. Oh, that, those rocks, why, why can't they throw the rocks uh, straight ahead of them rather than up in that arc? I mean, those rocks are virtually, and um, barrels are virtually useless in this game, and, and it's a real shame. Completing mission four. Right, mission 5A, another one that's been split into two loads. So now we're on the final level. Now, there's actually a glitch in this. You must scroll this screen all the way down, because if you could start to proceed forward once you've taken out all these enemies, if you don't do that, the whole game will just crash and you'll get a whole load of unsightly colours on the screen. Oh, you bastard. Yeah, you get a whole bunch of unsightly colours on the screen for you just st to blankly stop and stare at while you wonder what the hell just happened. And then that obviously means you have to start the whole goddamn game all over again. So as long as you remember, first, things, um, the first thing to do in this level is to go straight down to the bottom of the screen and scroll it down as far as you possibly can. You must do that. It's the very first thing. And do not even think about walking back up to scroll it back up. Just see if... Oh, look, even the moving blocks from the original arcade. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, well, that... That block, that block got me, even though it clearly didn't. I have there was clearly a noticeable gap there. Right, so there you have it, Double Dragon for the uh, 48k Spectrum. There, there was never a 16k version. It was never going to fit into that tiny amount of space, and there was never a special 128k version done for it. Although it does work on those machines. So it's good. It's good and ambitious that they managed to get in what they did. That they got some reasonable use of color on the backgrounds and the, and not too much in the way of clash. Or, except except when there are some diagonals, there are some noticeable bits of color bleed, but nothing t too. Terrible. I mean, we're far cry from from the kind of color clash that was in my review of Kung Fu Master, for instance. Um, pretty much all the. It seems as if all the moves that Billy and Jimmy Lee can do are in there, even the shoulder throw and and the headbutt, and all the bosses seem to be there as well which is another job in the eye for the aforementioned C64 version, which didn't even seem to have a Bobo anywhere in it. Um, and in the C64 version, you couldn't climb up and down ladders. They were just for show. Um, so, but enough of that, we were on that Spectrum version. So graphics, well, as I said, colorful backgrounds, uh, Slight jerkiness in the scrolling, but then with the colour the, the, the technique they used, that was unavoidable. Um, sprites look okay-ish. I mean, they're well animated for the most part, although although one or two of the moves aren't quite as well animated as others. Obviously, they had to make some cutbacks because of the lack of memory, so things like all the characters having the same legs, even a Bobo was was a compromise that had to be made to fit it all in as well as as well as the aforementioned splitting of two levels into halves um, 
and at no point did I have a problem with not being able to see where my character was so uh, and I didn't notice much in the way of slowdown either sound um, it's not that great really as you probably guessed um, I mean I very given how much they fit in I, I presume there wasn't really much left in terms of sound if there's one thing though I, I wish there could have been a separate thwacking sound for each strike someone did on a character you, you only get it for the first one and that does take away some of the uh, impact of the um, of the whole experience it, it just makes the, whole, the experience feel a lot weaker than it should have been. So, and and there's there's even on the 128k there's no music whatsoever. Um, gameplay. Well, as I said, considering of the, the action from the original arcade has been transferred to a one button fire one fire button method, it's really quite good that they managed to get all the all of the Billy and Jimmy Lee's moves in there, and um, and they're not wildly difficult to pull off. And even though it's got some weirdness, like if you wanted to do a a, a jumping kick, if you were facing to the right and wanted to jump kick to the do a, do a flying kick to the right you'd have to press down right and fire instead of upright and fire which might seem a bit odd because upright and fire is just a jump without any kind of kick but once you get used to that it's not too bad i would have preferred if you actually had to press the fire button for every strike you did because it does make the game way too easy when you can simply stand over someone so once they've fallen down and, and just hold down the fire button, keep doing the same move, and then they automatically get up and get automatically struck by your strike, which basically means that they're powerless to do anything until they eventually die. It does take a lot of the challenge away, and that really is a shame. It's also a shame that... Uh, that when it comes to the rocks and barrels that you can throw, you have to be quite some way away from the enemies for it to hit because of the way it arcs over their head if you don't do that. If you do it at close range like you could have done in the arcade, it's just not going to work. It's just going to fly harmlessly over their heads. And as you saw, you can climb um, you know, climb up and down ladders, which you saw me do in the first level, at that point where you first saw Linda. So, uh, so that, uh, so that that's also good as well. Um, longevity is questionable, unfortunately. As you saw, I it was it wasn't exactly uh, particularly challenging at the best of times. So it's, especially with the aforementioned thing about being able to hold down a fire button to repeatedly spam an enemy with the same move uh, whenever you're standing over where they fell after you first knocked them down. That does take away a lot of the enjoyment and once you've completed Double Dragon, which I'm pretty sure wouldn't take long, it's questionable whether there's a really much incentive to play through it again. It's nowhere near as addictive as it was in its original version. I mean, even something as simple as as what I mentioned about being having to press a fire button every time you wanted to do a strike would have could have potentially made all the difference and made it more challenging and enjoyable. But sadly, that's not the case. And the fact that there's no separate 128k version that could have had in-game music, it, it just seems like a missed opportunity all round. I mean, this came out two years after the uh, 128k Spectrum came out, and the original arcade version, Double Dragon, d didn't actually come out until a year before this version came out. So it's not a case of the 128k not being available at the time of development beginning. It's... So all of that being taken into account... Uh, 
I think I'm going to give the Spectrum version of Double Dragon. Five out of ten. It's not a terrible port by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, I definitely, I, as an example, I definitely enjoyed that playing that more than I did the Spectrum port of Kung Fu Master. I mean, this is quite, this is pretty, um, this isn't the mo most interesting experience in the world, but at least it's not slow, uh, unlike that. And uh, at least there's better use of colour than there was in that as well. And, and that's just one example. I mean, it's nowhere near as good as Renegade, for, uh, which did the, and Target Renegade, which did a similar kind of thing, only much better. Um, was it a bit too over ambitious for the Spectrum 48K? Possibly, but in the same token, it's still amazing that they managed to fit in what they did, even if it did mean splitting a couple of the longer level levels into two loads. I mean, as you saw at my last life, they even managed to fit in a bit with the with the blocks coming uh, um, shooting out of the walls. So they have it, five out of ten for the Spectrum version of the first Double Dragon. So hope you enjoyed this review. Texie eighty eight out.